Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. Today we're talking about season four, episode 13 of the Potomac Housewives. Stay tuned for the lowdown on this episode. Hey, 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 what it do, baby? What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Gigi. Thank you for tuning back into your girl's channel, Gigi's Reality. I mean, we know it's the new week. We are blessed to see another Monday. And you know what that means. It's the, over the weekend. The Potomac Housewives came on. So we got to talk about these bitches and they... Oh, Potomac Housewives, drama on TV. Why did I just bust into a B? I don't know, that was random as fuck. Next time I'm gonna be DJ Khaled, another one. Boy, I'm stupid. All right, let me move on. Okay, first of all, if you are new to your girl's channel, let me welcome you to Big What's Up. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate the love. And as a form of love, can you please hit that subscribe button that's down there? You know, it's red, it lights up, all that, that business. You know how this works. And matter of fact, put a heart emoji down in the comments so I can shout you out. I want to show you guys I appreciate you. Let me put your name up here in likes as a form of appreciation. I love you guys. Just to let you know, we see each other. All right, focus cam. All right, we see each other. Like I said, Potomac Housewives. Okay, this bitch opens up with um, God dang Giselle talking about Ashley. And they were on a phone call in her car. And she was saying that she wanted to apologize over how things happened at Robin's party in regards to Michael, you know, because she really wants to support Ashley. You know how that works. Giselle's support works real, real funky based. Um, but nonetheless, she invites her over to like that ugly ass renovated home. Oh, my, my cheek is itching. Um, that uh, re ugly ass renovated home where uh, Robin shows up too. Um, Robin showed up having to pee because she drank a whole bunch of shit on the way over there. And she decided to take her ass to the bathroom and it looked like a goddamn porter party. Porter potty. I never loved porter parties. Never could use them. It's not that I'm extra bougie. Like my family talk about me all the time when it comes to using bathroom out. I would rather have popped a squat behind a tree in the wilderness than use that shit. The water wasn't even running. That shit looked so nasty. Did y'all not see that? You could have got herpes just walking into that bathroom. It was so disgusting. You a, troop ro a trooper robber because it wouldn't have been me. I, I would have been pissing outside, okay? Um, but they go outside after her little nasty moment in the bathroom, Robin, um, and congratulate Giselle, pop off with some champagne, you know, hooray, Giselle, you got a home, that bitch is going to take three years to finish, I know how that shit works, watching my parents build a home, it is not cheap, and it is not, like, short at all, um, but nonetheless, Giselle's happy, her and her kids gonna have, like, a forever home, finally, um, but of course, we gotta talk about the drama, now, uh, Giselle was talking to Ashley about how, you know, her Michael situation, how she felt. Um, she expressed, you know, it was hard and having the girls not really support her, but Monique being there for her, you know, was real interesting, especially since the fact that Candace said that she was being two-faced and she brings up the text messages and it's like, ding, Giselle was ready to use that as ammunition against Monique because for, so far at the beginning of the season, she hasn't had any reason to go after Monique, but now she does because it's like, oh, you're throwing your friend under the bus. How dare you do that to Candace because you want to look perfect. And if you, like, we watched the situation. Monique didn't, like, insist or, like, intentionally, like, bring up those messages. Like, if you know what I mean, it's not like she was waiting to do that. She only brought up the messages because Ashley, you know, said that Candace called her Two-Face and she was trying to defend herself. Now, I don't agree with the fact that she brought up the text messages for sure. Um, Monique, all you really have to do is just be like, okay, I see what you mean or saying about Candace, but she knows the real truth and, you know, we can have a conversation separately, you know, in regards to that. But if you don't believe me, just, you know, me and Ashley, you know, we built this new rapport. I just hope that you would think I wouldn't do that, you know, blase, blase. But the whole message thing is starting to bite Monique in the ass because it's playing into the narrative that she is two-faced doing this to Candace. So now I'm real confused because you calling uh, Monique a goddamn hypocrite and shit. But 10 seconds before that, you and Robin were just throwing Katie under the bus over the whole Jacob comment situation because you were like, oh, you know, all the things going around about Michael, you know, how I tell you things because that's Ashley was like, you know, the whole Giselle, you're half shady, half concerned. And she's like, it comes off shady because how you play into like how you tell me stuff. And the way I guess she ended up telling Ashley about the Jacob situation before this actual, you know, conversation. Um, but you were like, oh, Katie called you, you stupid. And Jacob was saying how Michael was coming after him. Like it for sure was, you know, a super messy situation. Um, why y'all ain't putting in there that y'all was kiki and cackling in the kitchen. And then just because y'all didn't call her stupid 
saying that she had an arranged marriage went too far fetched off from that either. Like y'all, you and Robin definitely had y'all's play in it, which is kind of the same situation in Monique. It's not like y'all are going after the girl, but y'all are definitely playing in to her, uh, her downfall revenge karma that's getting her right now. Um, but so you all, we obviously know Giselle is going to go after Monique, um, any minute now. So we move on because Candace, she wants to buy a house. And she's looking at this bougie-ass neighborhood, which she clearly cannot afford. Y'all, I get, she told me, oh, the realtor was like, oh, you know, it dropped from seven to two. Shit, that's a bargain. But a bargain, Candace, you still can't afford because you are moving way too fast, faster than your pocketbook is, uh, you know, cashing in the coin. And Chris had to bring you back down to earth in reality because he's like, you know, to me, two million is a lot. I mean, Candace, you grew up, you know, grew up, you know, well off and stuff, but I don't think that you understand how are you still trying to move up and you are still getting assistance from your mama in the freaking 2,000 square foot condo that you're living in right now? And from the counseling session, she made it seem like, oh, she's paying half, which is only like $2,000. So if you and your mama is splitting four grand on the mortgage for that little bitty thing, how much do you think a 10,000 square foot home is going to go um, a month? 2,000 is only going to cover, you know, gardening fees and electricity and then you want to throw in, oh, I got three jobs, you know, my consulting, my hair business, and something else. Bitch, if you got those three jobs, how are you still in the condo now? Obviously, your hair business ain't making no money. Um, consulting pageants ain't doing nothing for you. Like, and then you want to bring up, oh, but I got a trust too. And then in the confessional, she was like, well, I don't know what's exactly in the trust, but you know, my mom, she did well off. So that's so ass backwards, Candace. The whole point of you moving out in the first place is so you not getting help from your mama. Girl, like you, I want karate chop you in the throat. You're so dumb. Take your brain out, shake it, put it back in your head and karate chop you back in the throat again until you get it. You are not, you can't afford it. You just cannot afford it. You have champagne taste on a beer budget, bitch. You still live in the ramen noodle life, okay? And that's what you need to be doing until you save up enough money for you and Chris to move out. And he's like, don't let us rushing out of our home have us struggling. Like, Chris is such a good match for you because he bring your ass back down to reality, which is where you need to be. So, Karen, she, matter of fact, speaking of home, she has her kids come over and they have a little dinner seafood night. And her, you know, perfume comes up. Her kids were proud of her. Talking about, you know, it smells good. I do want to smell it because the fact that her kids said something about it means, you know, it might not be that bad. But they were saying how it might have been unisex or whatever. So Ray throw his opinion to my, oh, we can be La Home or something like that. And Karen was like, nope, it is La Madame by Karen Huger. Um, I don't need your assistance, but I will call you if I need it. He's like, oh, we can't work together. She said, hell no, you too bossy. Nah, Ray, you can't work together because you fucked up your old company and you was not going to mess up Karen's before that bitch even gets started. Remember, you still in tax trouble from your last investment in your business don't do that to karen hell she's trying to get her own coin i mean the way she said y'all got separate bank accounts but still like don't make that bitch burn it down ray with your bad um money assistance before she can even get that whole started now michael and ashley now they have like a little dinner day and she's walking in and i was like oh you look good you worked out at the gym all that type of shit like was i the only person cringing like, when he was, like, complimenting her, it just seemed, like, real, I don't know, weird and, like, pervy. It just was, it was just not my cup of tea. Um, it was almost like he was trying to prove that he's, like, attracted to her and all that type of stuff. But they end up talking about how he is displeased with the women for comparing his old situation at the party to the current situation now. He's like, they don't even go together. I'm not understanding. I'm confused how they're connecting the dots. Nigga, what the fuck do you mean? How, are you confused? You grabbed that man's ass back then and you still grab an ass now. They are one in the same. We learn how to connect the dots in second grade. One, two, three, four, ding, 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 ding. And we are connecting the dots, Michael. Your ass is a perv. And I mean, I know you asked me to my, oh, I'm so glad this negative cloud is above us and all that type of shit. But like, no man, like you deserve to be in jail anyways. Cause that unseen footage for me was just the nail in the coffin. But nonetheless, see, they talking about a baby and fertility. So Ashley drops down that she wanted to go see her dad because it makes her think about, you know, what is she going to tell her child, you know, when it grows up, basically about her lineage. Now, Michael don't agree with it. Um, Kind of everybody she told kind of don't agree with it. But, you know, when Ashley got something in her head, if we haven't learned from past seasons, she going to do it. 
So Monique has a crazy moment. Her pregnant ass trying to struggle up the stairs. And she talking about, Chris, my water broke. Y'all from the preview, I really thought that bitch was going to have a baby. But that hoe was pranking Chris. She's like, yeah, I got to get that man prepared because he's real lazy based. Chris was calling the police and everything. Monique, you was so wrong for that prank. I mean, girl, I was just not ready for that. But before that, I laughed because, first of all, y'all son, he need to get his ass whooped. And Chris almost whooped his ass. He, but he held up, I guess, like the remote or something and was like, don't make me. Like, I love seeing that because it's just realistic. Like, people don't be punishing their kids on TV out of fear of, you know, the mommy shamers or CPS. Nah, nigga, we raise our kids with ass whoopings around here, okay? So, we have a little moment, too, where uh, I guess it's like the, the gala. Yeah, Katie invited them to a gala that nobody kind of figured out what it was. And she was like, no, Candace shows up with Dorothy because Dorothy accompanies her there. And she gave her mama a two-drink maximum. And she gets to the bar and boy, Dorothy, first of all, your makeup was too dark. Your hair was not cute. Your daughter has a weave business. Like, how does her hair look pretty decent and yours was looking like on its way out? Like, I don't get it. I just don't get it, Miss Dorothy. But... She sees Giselle and they kind of have like a nice little conversation. The first thing Dorothy's yelling out, we're in therapy. Woman, quit telling everybody you in therapy. It's not for everybody to know, okay? We learned black people from growing up. What happens in the home, stay in the home. But you love throwing out there that your daughter got issues. Because the first thing she's saying, yeah, my brat of a daughter. But I still love her though. And Giselle was like, you raised that brat. And Candace was like, thank you. I'm like, bitch, that's not a compliment. Um... But yeah, Giselle noticed the fact that Dorothy was digging at Candace and the fact that Giselle noticed, like, that means the shit was happening, like, it was very apparent to see. Um, but nonetheless, Robin shows up and then they feel Candace in on the whole drama because she had, like, a gift for Monique and she didn't show up or whatever. And so Giselle, as soon as Monique's came, name came up, it was like, Whoop, like, time to go after Monique. She had no problem, like, it's just too easy how Giselle can go after Monique. I do think there's, like, low-key a jealousy there. Y'all let me know. Do y'all think there's some jealousy between Giselle um, in regards to Monique, which is why she goes after her? But she was like, girl, Candace, that might not be your friend because she actually told us that she was showing some text messages covering up her ass to make her look perfect. Like, she never said nothing about Michael. When we all know, we all been joking, Monique is so Oh, perfect and Robin yo cockatoo you and R Giselle remind me just parakeets that feed off of each other R Giselle's like she threw you under the bus Robin's like girl yeah she did and then Giselle was like that really ain't your friend girl you need to check her like Robin I wish you would keep your distance from Giselle because I just don't feel like she brings out the best traits in you and then you was like I wish Monique would let her hair down and you know to cut, say a couple of jokes and they tell me how New Orleans Giselle was like I opened up myself to her brought my walls down and she still feel like we we made up at the wedding, call the truce, and she still feel like I don't like her. I don't care. Like, Giselle, that's the whole point. You literally talking about, oh, I don't have a problem. But then two seconds later are saying, I don't care about her. Like, you don't check up on her. I'm sure you ain't sent her a baby gift. Like, I understand people are just not going to like each other. But Giselle, I don't think Monique has genuinely gave you a reason to be bashing on her like the way you do. And then Robin, you talking about, oh, let her hair down. Last season, when she let her hair down and started drinking, y'all called that bitch an alcoholic. So, no, Monique is not going to sit there and be all out willy-nilly with you guys when y'all constantly have something to say about her. And Giselle was like, I'm done with her to my oh, You know, how dare she never wants to listen to me um, and she never cares for me. Like, all Monique was saying, granted you, Monique might have had truths. She's still allowed to feel like you don't necessarily, like you kind of diminish her you necessarily don't care about what's going on in her life because Monique can bring us something and it goes over your head Giselle like you don't care that's just what it is what it is now Katie show up and Jacob he starts spilling the beans because he tells him about the Michael situation talking about like yeah Michael was like you know what phone do you pick up he's like my business phone he's like well if I call I guarantee you gonna drop that business call and answer my personal call and I was like oh shit Jacob, Michael trying to be your daddy. Hey, he trying to pay your bills and buy you a tuxedo. You know, give you a little something on the back end at night when Katie is not at that ranch. I was like, oh, snap. Now, I'm hearing a little rumors that some people think that they made that up. But do y'all think they made that up? I mean, 
the way he recalled the event like the way he was just like easily talking about the details it didn't seem forced it just seemed like that was something he could just you know you know recall right off the back like it wasn't you know like a lie but katie but standing beside your man you look a hot ass mess what was that squirrel tail that you bobby pinned or rubber band that bob like you in these wigs i'm not understanding whatever is it else is in your closet burn it right the fuck now okay your friend Candace right there in front of you got a hair business, weave business. Go to her ASAP, all right? Now, your mama, Renthea, met Dorothy. Looks like they, those two might become thick as thieves, you know, like little Thelma Louise Cougar on the town. Um, but once they start talking about uh, Ashley, uh, Ashley ain't got the restaurant, y'all. Like, all his clothes, this was news to me. I mean, I knew nobody was fucking eating that kangaroo and bobbed your uncle and on the derby and all that type of shit like i don't i knew nobody was eating but damn like that bitch is close so ashley like you ain't got nothing else all you got is this baby as your insurance like you can't even have a restaurant you better start figuring out your next side hustle because just having a baby by this old ass man ain't gonna cut it especially after everybody see the proof that he was grabbing ass ain't nobody gonna want to do business with him no more honey um so you better find your way out quick now after that little gala after Candace said, I'm going to take this into consideration. I don't know if I believe it, but, you know, she's going to talk to Monique. Like, I swear, Giselle, you are just bitch made. You get on my nerves. Like, you just take too much pleasure in going after Monique. And I don't like that. Especially the fact that she hasn't really been, like, she doesn't say shit about you. Um, But after that, the gala, Ashley is called her Aunt Shayla. A. Oh, Sheila. I'm such an old soul. That's my jam. But anyway, she called and she didn't tell, let her know, we coming down to the ATL. We haven't seen you in a couple of years, but I want to see my dad. And she was like, well, girl, you know, I haven't seen your dad either. It's been 10 years. Now, everybody got a strange relationship with him. So she's like, you know, we can go together. So her and her mama, they go down to the ATL. They meet the aunt and uncle. And at the lunch, the uncle kind of revealed some stuff talking about, you know, it might have been good that you grew up without him because, you know, your dad was battling demons. Now, to me, that sounds like he either had, like, a drug problem or an alcoholic problem because the way Ashley grew up tent to tent living with her mama, like, it's clear that they was around the realm of drug issues of some type of matter. Um, so he was like, you know, it's going to be very difficult. You know, we love having a relationship with you, but your dad, I don't know. So they all decide to drive over to the home. Ashley's getting nervous, obviously, and she asked the aunt to go first. Now, I wish we could have seen the daddy's face because the aunt went up there and, like, they just put the caption at the bottom and the screen went black and it was, like, to be continued. And she's like, hi, you know, hey, it's, you know, it's Sheila, whatever, but here's your daughter, Ashley. Like, I could imagine that man's face, like, or him dropping to the flow. Like, I want to see that. I don't know if they will, but we'll just have to see, um, you know, how that plays out. I, I don't like Ashley, but I don't wish, you know, anybody not knowing their father. Like, I hope she gets that figured out. Um, so that kind of is how the episode ends. Now, you guys, let me know about this whole Candace Monique situation. Like, do you feel Monique was wrong for revealing the text messages? Or was it kind of like, you know, her way of defending herself? And Giselle, butt out. Do y'all think Giselle is being messy and going finding a reason to go after Monique in regards to that whole mess? In regards to um, Ashley and Michael, like, y'all... Do y'all think it's time for her to run? How long do y'all think she's going to stick out with Michael? You guys let me know. We're going to take a poll. Is she going to make it the next two years or is she going to make it the next five years? One or the other she going to make. Uh, but we just going to have to see how this bitch plays out next episode because that preview, the clash of the titans between Giselle and Monique is what I want to see. Robin, you might not be selling that house after this and Ron going to be mad at you because you know, fucked up the church and money again. We just going to have to see you guys. But thank you for tuning in. Please hit that like button, subscribe to your girl's channel, and I will see you guys next time. All right, catch you guys on the flip side. Deuces.